Today I decided to make a vlog about traveling in China and all the different ways that you can travel and uh, what I like and don't like about some ways and uh, stuff like that. So to start off with, traveling in China can be a really, really unique experience. You're going to have all kind of opportunities to travel and there's going to be a lot of different ways to travel and because of just where China is at in its economic development, you might experience new ways to travel. For me personally, I got to experience two new ways of travel. One of them was uh, the train and then another one was the sleeping bus. Traveling by train in China is pretty common. It's the way that people travel uh, in between provinces and anywhere you know that will require more than a couple hours on a bus because buses aren't exactly a fun way to travel so before i went to china i'd only ridden a train i think once or twice in germany and you know european trains are very nice you know it's it's clean it's air conditioned you have access to food and water and stuff like that but in china it's really different in china they've got a few different kinds of seats that you can get the first kind of seat that you can buy is a hard seat which is basically you sit on a straight back bench and so you're up like this and that doesn't frame very well. So you sit on a bench straight backed and it's not terribly comfortable and you're on a bench with about four or five other people. Then you've got what's called a soft seat which is just you and then two other people on a bench. You can get up and go to the bathroom but that's about it and uh, because of the standing ticket people which is something I'll get to in a second it it makes it really inconvenient to stand up so you end up sitting almost all of your journey and not moving. Yeah, try sitting on just a straight back bench for 38 hours like I did one time coming back from Guangzhou to Lanzhou. That ain't real fun. So a standing ticket is exactly what it sounds like. You just stand in the train for hours. You stand there and that's all you gotta do. You can't really, I mean you can sit down if other people you know haven't beaten you to it. You know people will just sit on their luggage in between the cars or uh, stand in between the seats in the aisles where people are trying to walk. Some people will lay under the seats and I saw this a few times. People just get newspapers and they kind of spread it under the under the seats and then they just lay under the under the seats for like you know eight or nine hours or longer and that just blows. If you're in the main compartment it's so dirty. There's people smoking even though technically you're not supposed to smoke. People are spitting out uh, sunflower seed shells and there's trash that's gathering and there's dirt coming in from outside uh, if people have got the windows open it's generally not a real pleasant experience oh and also most of the passenger cars are not air conditioned the best seat that you can get in a train is what's called a sleeping compartment sleeping compartment is exactly what it sounds like you get your own bed to sleep in uh, they're stacked two or three high depending on if you get the hard or the soft sleeper generally speaking they're really clean and you don't have to worry about people standing in the aisles and all of that you know the sleeping compartments are just for the people who bought the sleeping tickets as long as you don't get the bottom bunk on that sleeping compartment you're good because if you get the bottom bunk everybody's going to use your bunk just kind of as a bench whenever people are you know just going about the day you know before it actually is nighttime man this video was like all about trains just about and I, I didn't even get to talk about anything else since I hardly talked about anything else I'm gonna do the other stuff really really quick within cities you can travel easily by bus or by taxi you know you just pay a minimum fee get in tell them where you want to go or whatever at least in a taxi you can travel between cities in a taxi but it's really expensive buses are freaking great they're really cheap uh, most cities it charges uh, one yen to ride anywhere on that bus line. Like I said earlier in this video, you can take what's called a sleeping bus, which is usually used to travel back and forth between provinces or cities that are kind of far away from each other. It's exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's just a, basically a, a public bus that's been outfitted with bunks. Uh, before you get on the bus, this is really interesting. You have to put on these little booties, kind of like what nurses wear over their shoes in order to like not get the bus real dirty but you know it's gonna happen anyway and some buses they even make you take your shoes off completely before you walk back there I personally had a really good experience with the sleeping bus it was really nice I, I got to look up as we were traveling through the desert without many lights and I got to see the stars and it was just a real good time to just think and reflect about what I was doing and uh, it, and it was quiet you know and that was just something that I really savored if you can sleep with the the turns and the bumps and potholes and 
Uh, sometimes you got to stop if you're traveling on the highway or something. you got to stop for uh, all the police checkpoints. They check to make sure that the vehicles are not overcrowded and overweight. But, you know, all of that's just kind of normal. I mean, go figure, you know, that's just that just kind of comes with the territory. It's nothing crazy. And I guess, of course, the last option is to fly anywhere, which is what you do if you're freaking rich as hell. It's just kind of a waste of money, you know, and you're just in a plane. How unique of an experience is that? You know, you could be on a train and you can meet somebody that you've never met before, just like this guy here that I met. And, you know, you can you can have all kinds of really cool experiences, you know, on a train or on a bus or in a taxi and all this stuff. So don't fly if you don't have to. It's, it's, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's not a waste of time because it's shorter, but it's a waste of money. It's a waste of an experience. So I think that's all that I've got to say. You know, traveling in China is fun and you can see a lot of really cool stuff. You can have a lot of great experiences, not just when you get there, but you know, what matters is the journey, not the destination, whatever. But, you know, it actually turns out to be true. You know, I've had a lot of really cool experiences sitting on trains and talking with people that I'd never met before, talking in either English or Chinese and maybe even sign language. I, I don't recall ever like signing to people about, you know, stuff I couldn't communicate, but I'm sure that I did at one time. So the bottom line is whatever kind of transportation options that you're looking at, you know, just try to pick the one that you think is going to be uh, the most economical and the one that, you know, hopefully will give you the best experience and just try to make your time in China something that you won't forget.